All right, so let's go over um, how to use some of the methods that we've learned so far. So again, the point of these labs right now is to get you familiar with what a method is and what it means to have these things called parameters. Um, so let's kind of review what those mean to us by looking at a couple of methods that we've seen in class before. So draw line. So draw line is actually a method that exists within within this thing called graphics. So draw line is the name of the method and what it requires are four integers. Um, these four integer values actually represent the coordinates of two points. The starting point, for example, 0, 0, and then the ending point, for example, 500, 500. What this does is it draws a line between point 1 at 0, 0 and point 2 at 500, 500. So now if I run this, right, um, what it should do is, oh, I might have lost my setup when, um, got to stop my applet first. So again, it draws a line between the first point at 0, 0 and the second point, 500, 500. So as you guys can see, the coordinate system here is that the the origin here it's at zero zero, and then as you are increasing in x position, um, you go to the right. Um, but you know, unlike your regular Cartesian coordinates, when you are increasing your value of y, you're actually traversing down the applet. So this is at x equals five hundred and y equals 500 so that would then define this point right here so for example now let's try to draw a um, a horizontal line right horizontal line this time around of course we know that I can start anywhere let's say let's start from like the middle of the uh, board or something Ooh. don't want to be introducing some typos here. So let's say we're going to start at x is equal to 0. Um, my y position, let's say, will start at 300. Our ending position, however, of course, we want the y to remain the same because we're drawing a horizontal line. In a horizontal line, our y position will not change. Uh, but our x position, our ending point, should be, let's say, at about 300. <coughs> So again, here's my starting point at 0, 300. My ending point is at 300, 300. So now, if I press F5, um, don't forget the semicolons, of course. What we should see now is this, right? So again, our starting position here is at 0, 300. And then our ending position is at 300, 300 over here. So now if we're trying to draw a square, for example, then we would need four sides, right? Four lines. Um, we can draw the first line down here, and then let's go ahead and draw our vertical line from this point, then down. So our starting point now will be the second point of this horizontal line, um, or at 300, 300. And then our ending point is going to be 300 from this position, which is, you know, if we're at 300 here and we add 300 to it, that's at 600. But my x position doesn't change, of course. So let's make sure that works. Uh, close that applet and then rerun the program here. And there you have it. Um, so our first line here of course was formed using two points the first point being 0 300 here and then the second point being 300 300 our second line is at 300 300 and ends at 300 600 down here uh, so then of course you could continue down the line here so that you could draw yourself a square uh, the other example that we've seen is um, a method called draw a rectangle as you guys can see, draw a rectangle also 
um, takes in four integer numbers. Uh, that's int, x, y, width, and then height. So let's talk about this. The x and y is going to be the starting corner um, to draw this rectangle, right? So for example, if our starting corner is at 10, 10, um, we also have to define the width. Let's say it's at 100, and then the height is 100. Let's go ahead and run this so we can look at the code and what it draws. So my starting position here is at the top left corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my width, which is 100, and then my height, which is 100. So it draws a rectangle that is 100 by 100, um, where the starting left corner is going to be at 1010. Uh, so as you could imagine, you could do the same thing. And now let's say that we're going to start um, at, I don't know, 50, 50 or something, or 60, 60. And then it's going to be the same width and height. Close that applet. And then start. So there you have it. The other one again started at 60, 60. The width and height is 100 by 100 and so that's why we get these two lines um, so again uh, that's an example of using these methods methods are you know kind of like functions that you've used in the past they're a, a block of code that could that could be used to accomplish a certain function um, and so we're getting into this idea that one a method requires a name uh, here, the method name is draw a rectangle, and then sometimes a method will require arguments. The arguments here are numbers, or this idea of parameters, right? Um, so 10, 10, 10, 10, they're all integers here. You guys have seen um, some examples before, stuff like math.pow. Um, math.pow, which is coming from your lab 3, is a method right pow is the name of the method and then what it takes in as its parameters is a number um, that is a double a decimal number a and then a decimal number b so let's say two to the power of three is an example of one um, but what we know is that this actually will return a value um, and it's going to return 2 to the power of 3. So this one right here has a return type. And so if we call this and we try to print that out, it's going to return a value. And so some methods will have a return value and some won't. If it has a return value, then it is non-void. Therefore, it could be, you know, double, it could be integer, it could be boolean, it could be string. Uh, but again, it's non-void. But you could also create methods that um, that do not need to return anything. So for example here, um, one great example is this paint method. This entire thing right here is a method. Um, you will learn about this public keyword later. It just means that it's accessible from anywhere. Um, and the type here is void. So as you guys can see, there is no keyword here to return anything. Um, and so that's kind of like a cue to use whether or not a method um, returns anything. So since we have a void, we don't need to call return. The name of this method, for example, is called paint. And then its parameter is this um, parameter called G. And the type is graphics. So for example, I could create another one here, public add to. Um, let's say it's going to return an int. It's going to take in two ints. So now what we have here is um, a method called add to. It takes in two arguments or two parameters. They are both of type integer. And the return type is an int. So if, if I wanted to complete this method, of course, because I have a non-void method, I have to return an int. So now I'm going to go over here and say return. Um, a plus B. I'll just call this add. So again, uh, the idea of these labs currently is to get familiar with this idea of using methods 
and then becoming familiar with the vocabulary that's involved in using these methods and functions. So stuff like the method name, the return type, and then the most importantly of course is in order for you to know how to use this code you should probably know what parameters are required to use them. For this method called add the two parameters required are a and b and then both of them have to be numbers so now if I wanted to use that I could do add 2 and 3 um, and so if I wanted to print that out click apply and then as you guys could see um, all the way over here the return is the addition of A and B um, because here again this method adds the two numbers and return them right um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just explain things here um, take in two numbers A and B add them and return the sum so that's all it's doing so there you have it that's kind of like a quick run through using um, some of the graphics methods that we've learned so far um, again the whole point I know I've said it a million times but um, the idea here I'm trying to get you guys to use these applets and the drawing methods so that it's not so boring trying to learn about methods um, it's a lot easier for me to just go ahead and you know dive into the worlds of methods without doing the stuff uh, but the hope in showing you these methods is to hopefully try to engage you and you know so that you don't get lost totally in the code uh, so again I'm hoping that this is going to force you guys to kind of uh, be able to learn um, why it's required for you to know what the parameters are for a method so that you can use it um, as you want to to do things like draw specific shapes and lab 3 is going to take you through being able to use a method um, to accomplish certain tasks um, of course project 1 and lab 4 will require you to create all these types of different methods so that you have some familiarity creating them from scratch and hopefully by that point um, we'll have the auto grader working for us uh, so that you will get immediate feedback um, or semi immediate feedback when it comes to submitting these projects in lab thanks